oh terrific now there are people at these worship services that, ac <coughs> that actually claim that a glory <coughs> a glory cloud from God is <coughs> <coughs> maybe it is true it's time for wretched Yeah. Are you actually a superhero? I actually am a superhero, yeah. Don't turn that channel. Am I wrong? No. You think I'm right? No. Being ridiculous isn't easy. Talk about change. I'm Anderson Cooper. Ah, that's a lie. I'd be wearing a small t-shirt and pushing my biceps out. Why are you doing this? To hassle people. Hello, and welcome to A Wretched. My name is Todd Friel. I am your host, The Wretch. The song refers to just one word to describe what you are about to see. Really? Seeing, but not believing. That was from the Church of Smoke and Mirrors, run by Pastor Bill Johnson in Redding, California. Part of the New Apostolic Reformation in cahoots with the IHOP movement in Kansas City, which has a third river flowing into this ocean of chaos, the Toronto Blessing. That supposedly was the glory of God coming down. That's one of the battle cry prayers of this movement. Let the glory come around us. Let the river from the glory of the heavens open up on the anointing for the flowing of the glory from the river. Well, now the glory supposedly is coming down, oddly enough, <laughs> from the ventilation system. And the kids are soaking it up. Let's consider for a moment the times that the glory of God has appeared before people. What happens to those people? Consider, if you will, Moses. He had just seen a bunch of miracles by God, and he said, basically, I'm paraphrasing, the miracles are great, but I want to see you, God. And God said, you can't see me because it would kill you. So instead, God's glory passed him by. Remember this analogy, not perfect, but pretty good. The essence of God is a flame. The smoke that comes off of the flame, that's the glory of God. He's so God that something just comes off of him because he's so otherly. And Moses was allowed to only see the glory of God, otherwise, now, what happened to Moses? He turned white, I mean, the white hair. Anytime we see somebody in the Bible seeing the glory of God or even an angel, they freak out completely, total scared. And that's why God has to, that's right, total scared. That's why God has to say, don't be afraid. Did you hear those kids? Hmm? Did you? Hey, dude, cool. Look at this. Looks like the glory of God's coming down. I got to tell you something. They should be like Isaiah, who realized he was a man of unclean lips. He should have fallen down as a dead one instead of videotaping it like, hey, hey, this is kind of cool. Two words, photo and shop, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> okay, we, we have a Bible so that we can know God, but that doesn't seem to be enough for people. They actually need a glory cloud. Hold, come over here, David. Come over here just for a second. Okay, all right. During when we were playing the little smoky deal coming down, what did you say about Corinth? <laughs> Great, all right, really. Yeah, we have our problems, but... A cloud? Really? Yeah, like when, when Paul wrote to the Corinthian Christians, we go, whoa, how could those people be so dumb? And we, the American church, actually have a glory cloud. Got to be careful before you point your finger at the people in the Bible thinking, oh, they were so lame. We actually have churches that have glory clouds coming down. Okay, I'm sorry. Can I just do a complete aside? Here's what gets me about this. this. 
I heard a sermon that actually relates to this subject that was so much better than supposedly a glory cloud of God coming down. Mark chapter 6, verses 45, I think through about 52, Rexella. This is the story of the disciples. They just saw Jesus feed 5,000 people, and now they go out into the boat into the middle of the sea. They're about three and a half miles out, and the wind is blowing against them, and they are going nowhere. So they're stuck in the middle. Jesus intended to, mark this word well, pass them by. I do believe the Greek is par erkomai, that he was going to pass them by. As an aside to our present aside, you need to remember the Septuagint, that's a, uh, the, the Greek Bible, the Greek translation of the Hebrew Old Testament, okay? Hebrew Old Testament, written in Hebrew. Septuagint, about 120 years before the time of Jesus, was the Old Testament from Hebrew now written into Greek. With that information, Jesus par them, the same way that God Par Urkomide Moses when he was hiding in the cleft of the rock. Hold on, it gets even better. Do you remember what God said about himself when he passed by? Yahweh, Yahweh, I am that I am. When the disciples saw Jesus par Urkomide them, and they said, Well, who is this? You know what Jesus said? Ego, I me. That's that Greek of I am. <laughs> <laughs> you don't think that the Bible is supernatural? Just like God passed by Moses proclaiming, I am, so did Jesus walking on water pass by the disciples claiming, I am, demonstrating that he is God. <laughs> I hear something like that and I think to myself, that is magnificent. That demonstrates that the Bible is actually reliable and trustworthy and that Jesus is God. And these poor people need a glory cloud or even worse, glory feathers. Okay, we are now blowing that, the shofar, kind of a modern day version of it, to have glory feathers I, fall down. Look at the feathers, man. Look at the feathers. Look at this. Phil, look at this. I'm Phil. Look it's at like this. it's snowing. It's snowing. Oh, wow. wow. That's a glory cloud. It's probably more than that. Yeah. Look at that. Praise Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Look at, that's amazing. <laughs> Hmm. I, okay, I don't know. From, from, a, from an angel in the air duct? I don't know. Got a question for you. How did those feathers and that glory cloud get there? There are two options that I can see. Number one, caused by demons. They can do those tricks, you know. Or the other option, which is actually worse, it was done by the preacher. Ooh. This is wretched. Nothing says Merry Christmas quite like the gift of theology. So this year, give the gift that keeps on convicting. If you know somebody who isn't saved, send them our gospel presentation, The Biggest Question, and you can kiss that relationship goodbye. Who doesn't love our drive-by series bundled up together so we can sell you more stuff? The kids, they'll squeal with delight when they pull their own copy out of their Christmas stocking. Right, kids? Yeah, yeah. Get to your rooms. And if you know a monster child of that beloved relative of yours, why not send mom and dad drive-by parenting? Nothing says you have a monster quite like this bad boy. And if your marriage could use a little help, who's couldn't? Hey! Get drive-by marriage this year. Give the gift of theology at wretched.tv. Ho, ho, ho. In World War II, Adolf Hitler sent empty car trains to Ukraine to scrape their rich black topsoil and bring it back to Germany. And that's why the Ukrainians say they raped our land and they raped our women. Would you please think about bringing some joy and the gospel to Ukraine by sponsoring your very own Tomorrow Club? Visit Wretched.tv, watch a video, and sponsor your very own Tomorrow Club in a small village in Ukraine. Visit Wretched.tv. 10 seconds, Mr. Phil.
Be gone now. Hello and welcome back to our wretched. We are, uh, wow, the craziest thing happened during the break and we owe an apology to all the glory cloud people. Apparently there can actually be a glory cloud. The word is full of examples of where God has encountered his people through the cloud and it's, it's, it's way beyond. It is a communication portal too, but it's not just a communication portal for bandwidth or whatever. It's for God. It's, it is God himself communicates in presence. Uh, okay, I don't know for sure what that means exactly. That would be Patricia King. Whoa, Patricia King. Thank you, that was my impression of Patricia King. Whoa, when she gets the whoa anointing. That was her explanation for the glory cloud. Uh, the glory is not God himself. The glory is the thing that God gives off because if God himself showed up, those people would all be dead. However, she's trying to justify these modern shenanigans to get the people. You've got to just, see, that's what happens when you, you do the signs and wonders thing. You just got to elevate it and ratchet it up to a new degree. Now we've got to come up with an explanation for the glory cloud. And it's biblical. In 2 Chronicles chapter 5, um, it talks about, starting in verse 11, where the priests came together in unison and where the trumpeters and the singers, they all came together. And um, they said in verse 13, they praised him saying, he indeed is good for his loving kindness is everlasting. And as they were proclaiming that, it says, then the house, the house of the Lord was filled with a cloud. It says it right there. <laughs> That's something. Not everything in the Bible that happened then is for today, Patricia. When the cloud of the glory comes, it'll point you to Jesus Christ. You know, signs and wonders, that's what they're all about. It's not so that you can just say, woohoo, a sign, a wonder, a cloud. It's to point you to Jesus Christ. That's what everything in the kingdom is about. Okay, two, two, two things. Actually, signs and wonders, which Jesus did, very few people did. Prophets, apostles, you can take a look at Matthew chapter 10, 2 Corinthians 12, 12. Very few people. It was for the supporting of what they were preaching. That was the point of signs and wonders. Number two, well, we've just been blowing it around here at Wretched. We've got to start shooting this show in the kitchen like she does. I don't think it should be that abnormal for believers to experience things like this. Part of my mandate is to, to prophesy to the body that this, this is a, a revolution of spirituality that we were living in, that we would get back to, like in the Bible days, it says in the Bible that, that the latter glory of the house will be greater than the former. And everything that we see recorded as far as past history of the church and what others have experienced in the past is former glory. And it says that the latter glory will be greater. Hmm. She should just put that Bible away because she isn't using it right. That is simply nonsense is what that is. Those signs and wonders were done until we had ourselves the complete revelation. Now that we do, we don't have those things. Take a look at 2,000 years of church history. The only time you see any of these miracles, signs and wonders within the last 20, 2,000 years since the time of the apostles were from fringe wing ding groups. Signs and wonders, this might be very helpful for you to feel. What's the difference between signs and wonders and charismatic gifts? Signs and wonders, a few people, Elijah, Elisha in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, prophets, disciples, Jesus, Paul, very few people. Signs and wonders, the big kaboom miracles. These, these would be the parting of the Red Sea. This would be raising people from the dead, casting out demons. Those are signs and wonders to do what? authenticate the message of the messenger. Now that we've got the Bible, don't need those things. Then you've got the charisma, the charismatic gifts. These are radically different. A few spectacular, all believers, and not, not these big showy things. Instead, they are all done for the edification of the body. By the way, you've got a charismatic gift. That doesn't mean speaking in tongues necessarily, Charisma, the great, these, these gifts that are given to every single believer, always for the edification of the body. If I could just sneak this in too as an aside, I actually think the gift of healing actually still exists today. That's right, and they're actually healers. 
Before you send a letter to John MacArthur, let me explain that. What are the purposes of the charismatic gifts? It's for the edification of the body. Uh, do you know somebody inside of your church that you perhaps have known in the past who has this amazing ability to come alongside of somebody who's hurting and put their hand on their shoulder and say, friend, I know what you feel like. They cry with you. They mourn with you. They rejoice with you. They share just the right Bible verse at just the right time. That's the type of healing that I think is included inside of that charismatic gifts of healing. If you will, it's a psychological healing gift. It's an emotional healing gift. Not, boom, get up from the ground, or you can walk now healing gift. Those things are, those are the signs and wonders. But I think the charismatic gift of healing is that psychological healer, not a psychiatrist or a psychologist, that person who just has that way of making you feel better in your situation. Signs and wonders? Charismatic gifts, a few spectacular, everybody who's a believer and for the sake of the body. So, Patricia King, these should indeed be happening all the time. These things are gone. We don't get to rebuke tornadoes. Watch this. In the name of Jesus, you will not touch my house. I command you to go in the name of Jesus, Tornado. There you go. Look at his lips. Look at that. That's the power of the spoken word. You see it just, you see it just, it just dissipated out. completely. Oh <laughs> like goes over your house. Yeah, you can go up over the top. You will lift and go up over the top. Like that never happens. Like sometimes a tornado, you know, bounces over buildings or touches down here but doesn't... Whoa. Look out. We got one. We got... Back, you rascally tornado, you back! Wow. Maybe we do all have that gift. This is Wretched. Never be afraid to share your faith again. When you put your trust in Jesus and the good news is, you got God's word on it. He'll forgive you and you'll go directly to heaven. Terrified. Available now at Wretched.tv. Two words for you if you don't think this signs and wonders business is huge. Oh, yeah? Welcome back to our Wretched. Let me take you to an event called The Call. These things are huge. They actually rent out football stadiums, and they pack them out. It's all a part of the New Apostolic Reformation IHOP Toronto blessing business. Here's what they're about. The key is to identify the head demon and map out the strongholds they occupy and raid their camps to rid the cities of demonic oppression. So they go into places like, mm, say, Nashville, and they hold these monster events, and they go about chanting and praying all day to supposedly drive out the head demon, and then all the little demons scatter with them. Here's a sample of the Nashville event, and one of its leaders, if not the leader, this is Lou Engel. The anointing of the Holy Spirit just came on its place. I want you to get down in small groups right now. I want you to begin to pray for the outpouring of the Spirit all over the South, all over Nashville. I want you to move in revival faith right now. Get in groups. Michael W. is going to midwife this thing, but right now, begin to lift your voices and call on God for nationwide outpourings of the Holy Spirit. Pray for your cities. Pray for your states. Come to the south with a main mighty awakening. Go ahead now. Let's rumble together. Elijah prayed, the drought ended, and the rain came. A man of like passions like us, but the heavens opened when he prayed. God, we're praying for the early and the latter rain all over America right now. Continue to pray 
Things are moving right now in the heavens. God responds to the cry of the righteous. He's gathered his godly ones who've made a covenant by sacrifice. It's been hard. It's here. It's been to your cry, to your sacrifice right now. Three thoughts for your consideration. Number one, why doesn't somebody turn up that guy's microphone so he doesn't have to yell? Number two, why is he rocking like this? Oh, are, are they at the wailing wall? And finally, number, I can't stop. <laughs> like a little bag you had when you were a kid. Number three, listen to this new apostolic language. Lift up your heads, O you gates. You are the gates to the presence of God. And God is going to shift the joy into a brand new place. God is going to shift the city to the city. He's going to shift the nation. He's going to shift the religious, the governmental, and the economic structures. Lift up your heads, O you gates. And be lifted up, you everlasting doors. Lift up your heads, O you gates, that the King of glory may come in. You are the gates. Um, you're a scripture twister. This entire movement is just loaded with a language. It's just, you have to have a little apostolic reformation dictionary to figure it out. One of their new words that they're into these days, it's about shifting everything. You got to shift the shift so that the universe is shifted with the anointing of the glory of the river, shifting for the power of the down pouring of the rain because of the shifting of stuff. I think the DNA is changing in America to really going after God, really hungering for God. And then at six o'clock in the morning, when most kids sleep, we're calling forth the army of the dawn from six to nine or whenever we get it done. We're gonna pray for the Nazarite generation to arise up. Fast and pray, new breed, young people. Hey, is that the glory cloud falling? Or Ooh, you know what he just said there, don't you? Uh, me neither. It's this language. I, you're a Nazarite generation. Before you were Joel's army from Joel 2 and Acts chapter 2. You got to pray like nobody's business and fast, and then Jesus will return. In other words, they have bad eschatology too. That was from Detroit City. They travel all over the globe packing out football stadiums. When did this all begin? In 1990, the Spiritual Warfare Network was formed by these apostles and prophets. They have been ridding cities of demons for over two decades. Got a question for you. Do those cities still have demons? How's the crime rate? Mm, how's the divorce rate in, say, Nashville and Detroit City? No better. Why? Because these people are false teachers. And if you know somebody in the New Apostolic Reformation, IHOP or the Toronto Blessing, use a language they can understand. Get out. Until tomorrow, go serve your king.